Hello everyone! And while I was in the process of editing a huge video regarding the whole Skibidi zombie multiverse, the 47th episode got released by Monster Up, so I decided to put out my analysis of it first. And after that, I'll finally release my big project I was working on for a really long time, so be sure that you are subscribed to my channel not to miss my new awesome video. And now I'll analyze episode 47 of Skibidi Zombie Universe for you, and find all its secrets and details that you could have missed on your own. What are the new abilities of Astro Duchess and Titan Cameraman that were shown in this fight? Who suddenly appeared in this episode and why I am so happy to see him again? Is our Speakerman friend from the last episode actually survived or got cooked? And most importantly, what exclusive information did Monster Up share with me regarding the future plot of his universe? And also, what other project has Monster Up been working on and why it should be interesting to you? So if you want to know the answers to all these questions, then get your tea and snacks ready and prepare to watch this video to the end, because I save the best part for later as always, and let's go! But before I'll start digging into episode 47, let me remind you real quick about the events of the previous episode so you won't get too confused about what has actually been going on. And it starts with Plunger Man encountering the redesigned Skibidi Scientist version, who now looks much more similar to the scorpion appearance and not a crab, as he was infected with a scorpion strain at the Plague Doctor's lab. We also saw that the original scientist's body is now functioning as a pilot inside his scorpion puppet's mouth. As Plungerman and the Speaker Man strategize on what to do next, Zombie Scientist examines a frozen zombie that vanishes, hinting at interference from another universe and the external technology's presence. Then, as our agents got exposed, the scientist launches a pod containing Zombie Kleiner, a character previously seen in Boom's original series. So the Speaker Man decides to take him while Plungerman moves away. And although Zombie Kleiner is no match for the agility and strength of the Speaker Man, he still manages to land a blow that puts Speaker Man in danger, leaving us uncertain about our friend's fate. Meanwhile, we're getting back to Plungerman, who catches a glimpse of a mysterious purple portal which looks really similar to those that the Alpha used in Dom Studio's Skibidi Multiverse, suggesting potential multiverses connections. And that is also possible how these portals could be linked to agents from other universes, who possibly tracked down the activities of powerful Titans or the Plague Doctor's threats, as we know that he actually plans on conquering several Skibidi universes. So it is possible that some special agents from other multiverses are now specifically targeting the Plague Doctor and minions, and that's why Zombie Skibidi Scientist was attacked by those mysterious agents in episode 46. And by the end of this episode, we see Titan Cameraman and the restored Astro Duchess arriving to assist Plunger Man. Okay, so now when your memory is refreshed and you're all set and ready, episode 47 is already on your screens. But before I'll dive into actual analysis, let me remind you to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you like the content I'm making because something really crazy is coming soon and you don't want to miss it. So if you are subscribed now, let's get back to the episode. Okay, and it immediately starts with some heated action. As Scientist releases several zombie kamikaze toilets at Titan Cameraman and our returned girly. So two of them split up and start dealing with their portion of zombies on the run. Titan Cameraman is using his machine guns to shoot the freaks off, which he does successfully. And then he pulls out his new giant sword colored in yellow and rushes at the Scientist with it and it seems to me like a tribute to the infected Titan TV Man Sword, who was a friend to Titan Cameraman all this time. Okay, but not only the scientist was distracted, but the Titan as well, because he missed one zombie kamikaze that sticked to his back without him noticing, and then detonated himself, which also caused Titan Cameraman to fall to the ground with his jetpack being severely damaged, and it's not cool at all. Meanwhile, we're getting shown Astro Duchess, who is fighting with the other portion of the scientist's minions using her gravity guns and lasers from all the openings possible. She also uses different objects from her environment, such as cars, to have a little bit more fun with her opponents. And when the scientist also started blasting her with his purple beam, she activated her mini shield consisting of yellow energy, which looks really similar to the shields that basically all the upgraded members of the Alliance are using now. And I should also say that this upgrade was really necessary for her considering what she went through during her previous appearance. But then the scientist decides to spice it up and activate the charge on his tail, which as I already told you in my analysis of episode 46, is one of the most powerful parts of his upgraded puppet body. 
And well, to be more precise, I was told by MonsterUp specifically that his tail contains eight charges, one of which the scientist already used in the previous episode. And in case of really tough battles, two of these eight charges are immensely powerful and are capable of breaking through any opponent's defense. And besides the tail, he also contains two more charges inside of his spine that are fueling the weapons in his hand claws, as well as two charges inside of his head that are boosting the level of his adrenaline or rage if he'll have to show the extreme powers to escape destruction if the worst scenario possible occurs. So Astro Duchess avoids the shot from his tail and then answers him with her own lasers. But unfortunately, the scientist got the nice energy shield for himself too, and to add to that, his minions are also still present on the battlefield. So one of the survived zombie kamikaze jumps straight onto her forehead and distracts her from fighting the scientist. But right before the little freak was about to explode and ruin the Duchess's makeup, no other than G-Man appears and takes him away with his blade. And first of all, let me tell you that we haven't seen this guy since episode 35 straight where all his vital powers got almost consumed by the Hephaestus core, so we nearly lost him. But thankfully, the knight interfered just in time and told G-Man that he's being using X-18 core wrong all that time, and in case G-Man would ever use it again, he'd be gone imminently. Because frequent uses of such cores without any protection or objects to store it in will eventually destroy the owner's core. So after episode 35, the Hephaestus core was extracted from Jimmy's body, and he got to repair himself in one of the Alliance's bases. And now he's back in all of his glory, and man, I like to see him a lot. Because for once, we won't have to worry for his well-being as his vital powers aren't consumed by X-18 core finally. But even without its powers, Jimmy is still insanely upgraded with all sorts of new weaponry and armor, so he can fight even the scientist's new puppet. And of course, now his biggest improvement is having literal hands that are capable of being transformed into powerful guns as if he was a transformer or something. So after shooting at the scientist's shide, who also looked shocked seeing his former friend in the battlefield, G-Man revealed that he was holding Zombie Kleiner's body all this time that he threw at the scientist. But not just because to tease him about, but as Kleiner was detonated too, and the explosion stunned the freak for some moment. And the fact that Kleiner was also defeated by G-Man off-screen also suggests that the speaker man that was fighting this freak in the previous episode could actually have his chances to survive. At least I hope that he did because this guy was quite a badass. Okay, and in the meantime, G-Man got Plungerman the new jetpack and also the new cool weapon. So now Plungerman is not that defenseless anymore. But this weapon is not for using as your regular shotgun, but it was made specifically to cure zombies from the virus. Do you see the purple color of its charges? Does it remind you of the Atlantis Core? Well, it sure does, because these charges are basically souls that were already converted into basically vaccine-producing weapon. And I must also mention how Monster Up shared three posters with me, and one of these posters described exactly how this weapon called Soul Extractor works. So the Soul Stone called Duat is capable of curing the infected, but in exchange it requires souls. It can also assess the strength and significance of candidates for cure as it's sentient, and the more valuable the infected subject is, the more lives are required to save him. So Duat is a tool to fight the virus, but not everyone can be saved as the sacrifices are needed to win this war. And this weapon is mostly required for bringing back the most valuable assets for the Alliance, which is pretty cynical if you ask me, but nothing can be done about it. So Plungerman has three charges now to cure Skibidi Scientist, so that the Alliance would get a valuable asset for their army. Meanwhile, Titan Cameraman initiates the melee battle with the Scientist so that Plungerman had an opportunity to shoot him with Soul Extractor. But unfortunately, our cameraman wastes the first charge as he misses, and instead hits this random zombie cameraman in the distance. The guy gets cured of his disease and the moment, so of course he goes yeppity hooray! Well, only to just get bitten and infected within a literal second once again. And I know that this scene is supposed to be funny, and many viewers laughed over it, but having in mind how many cameramen gave out their souls to make this one charge happen, such a waste just makes me depressed a bit. And Titan Cameraman also suffers quite heavy injuries and can't continue the battle with the scientist. But thankfully, Astro Duchess and G-Man both come to the rescue and start blasting the scientist instead. And it clearly makes the freak unhappy. Because he realizes that something fishy is going on so he tries to back up and break this besiege, but his scorpion form is way too slow and heavy for that. And it gets even worse for the scientist once G-Man also knocks him out with his fists. 
And then Titan Cameraman releases a few missiles which get infused by Astro Duchess and sent straight into the freak's face. And while he was stunned, the whole crew gets near him and tries to immobilize him completely so that Plungerman wouldn't miss the second time. The scientist realizes that everything is quite bad for him right now, so he tries to use his special emergency charges I told you about earlier, but unfortunately for him, G-Man foresaw his movements and strangled his tail so that his former friend wouldn't be able to use it. And then Titan Cameraman also cuts one of his parts with his sword, which makes the scientist's satiation even more miserable. But man, even despite all of these efforts, Plungerman fails the second time as well, even though he literally flied right at the scientist's face. And it happens because the scientist closes his mouth tight at the very last time covering the real body of the scientist that has to be hit, and the second priceless charge ricocheted from his armored jaw. The situation is getting crazy bad for our guys, so G-Man starts beating this puppet up his jaw in order to break it and reveal the real scientist. And even though it's cruel, he has to do it in order to save his friend. Okay. So Plunger Man carefully takes the very last charge and prepares to make his best shot ever. Everyone is watching the bullet's flight with their breath taken in slow motion, and thankfully the wait proved to be worth it this time as the charge finally hit the target. Jesus, guys. So many cameramen gave their souls for the previous two charges, and it was for nothing. But I'm glad that at least the third one achieved the goal in the end. As the real scientist gets cured, a large beam of purple light flies into the sky, which always happens when a significant character from some movie or anime gets either revived or destroyed forever. Then the scientist's puppet falls lifeless on the ground, and Plungerman comes closer to check if their initial plan actually worked or not. And man, it really did. Because in the next scene, we see the original Skibidi scientist slowly getting back on his feet, as if he just woke up from a really long slumber. And as he turns around, we see that his face is completely normal now as he got cured from zombie virus for good. And then he even smiles a bit as G-Man is also in the crowd surrounding him. And I bet that he didn't see his friend in the really long time. Plus, he must be really happy to see that Jimmy also stayed unaffected by the virus. Okay, but before our guys have the chance to rejoice together and maybe even have a drinking party, something totally unpredictable happens next, because it is no other than the Plague Doctor himself who appeared right before us. But instead of the fight, he suggests surrendering from his part, which is totally insane. And of course, no one is buying it, so every single member of our squad got their weapons ready, but this suggestion took them by surprise as well. And on this really unhinged moment episode 47 ended, and if you guys will ask me whether I believe that the Plague Doctor truly surrendered, then I'll answer you that of course it's not that simple. I won't ever believe that having such a corrupted and vile personality and a truly desire to so-called cure the whole world and other universes as well, the Plague Doctor would give up that idea just because the Alliance invented a tool to bring some infected back to life. I'd say that the Plague Doctor probably intends to infiltrate one of the Alliance's bases or labs as a prisoner, and then steal something really valuable from them, or even infect them from inside out, but I also cannot be the only one who's suspecting this. So I'm really hoping that at least G-Man, who is the most cold-blooded member of our squad, will sense this fakeness about Dave's surrender. But we'll see how it goes in the next episode. And before finishing this video, I'd like to mention another project from Monster Up because this is really interesting. So he created the second channel called Monster Up Life, where he already posted the short trailer for his brand new animation series named SCP Squad. And based on what I saw, aesthetically it looks really similar to Skibidi Zombie Multiverse, but this time it features no Skibidi aka Booms brand creatures, and only monsters and mysterious humanoid agents with masks. And also considering how it's called SCP Squad, I assume that its plot may be somehow connected to the universe of SCP-049. And let's not also forget that the Plague Doctor came from SCP Universe 2 with his pestilence obsession. And the first episode of SCP Squad is promised to launch on the 27th of October, and I personally cannot wait to see it. And what about you guys? Would you like to see the analysis of the first episode of SCP Squad from me? because I'd definitely be happy to do something like this. And that was all for today. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you will not miss my new cool videos. And also, don't forget to leave your comment about what you think will happen in the future episodes of Skibidi Zombie series, because I'm always interested in what you guys have to say. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!